Hello, everyone. My name is Mick Kirsten. I'm the founder and CEO of Taskstop and the author of Project the Product. And I'm just thrilled to be part of this amazing learning community and to be sharing with you some of the main things I've learned since the sort of April, May timeframe when I last gave a talk on tracking DevOps metrics around flow and really measuring objectives and key results or OKRs. So I hope to uh, share with you my latest learnings on how we go from micromanagement misery to finding flow for our organizations. And I have to say that this has been such a hot topic with many of the executive discussions I've been doing as OKR has become a more and more important topic. At the same rate, over the past year, I've been seeing a lot of failure modes around OKRs and a lot of organizations struggling to ad adopt them effectively and struggling to shift away from these ways that we've been accustomed to in terms of tracking activities instead of outcomes. So the goal here is, of course, to show you how you can actually use OKRs to help you move from project to product, from uh, outputs to tracking outcomes, and to help your organization move faster in terms of becoming a, a digital and product-oriented innovator. Now, OKRs, for a lot of people, uh, probably started with reading books like John Doerr's Measure What Matters, uh, which in 2018 defined what objectives and key results are as these objectives which are meant to be both qualitative and inspirational, they give us a way to point the direction around driving innovation, driving value to our customers, to the market. And then the key thing is having only two or five KRs or key results, uh, which are in the end metrics of progress, how we track how we're doing. So it's, uh, in an interesting coincidence, this week is the, my 10th year of setting OKRs for task stops. So we're finalizing the, this particular week. And it's been a learning journey of over a decade to understand how we get better and better at it. We've made some significant changes uh, in this particular cycle. And also learning to how they get adopted at massive scales and organizations that have tens of thousands of people relying on alignment around OKRs. So the key thing about OKRs is that in the end, what we want to track is outcomes, not activities. And of course, we know that projects tend to specify activities rather than specifying uh, these important outcomes for what we're delivering to the business, to the customer, to the market, to our partners. And this is where really the, the flow framework came in. The flow framework originated out of my own work within, within our own organization of understanding how to connect these business metrics to actual business results or key results and outcomes. And what the flow framework basically says is that we need to understand, first of all, what we're measuring those outcomes for. And everyone working on that particular value stream needs to understand what outcomes they're driving, who the customer of those outcomes is. Now, the business key results, those tend to be well understood already. These are around improving things like net promoter scores or retentions or, or financial metrics. But the key thing I realized that was missing was a way of actually tracking how we get there. How do we know whether we're improving? How do we know whether the, the DevOps initiatives that we have underway are actually making it easier for our teams to deliver those kinds of business outcomes to the customer? And so the whole idea of these flow metrics is to actually have a set of flow key results that actually tell us whether we're improving uh, or whether we've got impediments and bottlenecks that are slowing us from improving uh, in terms of how easily we're able to deliver those kinds of outcomes and to understand where we need to invest. Are we lacking some DevOps automations? Are we lacking some important platform components? So the idea, of course, is that we both track these business key results as well as flow key results. So really what I've seen when used effectively is that OKRs can help catalyze for you the shift from project to product. The challenge is, and I'll, I'll speak to some of the pitfalls shortly, is when we snap into old behaviors while renaming them with OKRs. So here are a few of the, the bigger pitfall examples I've, I've encountered of how things can actually go quite wrong with OKRs. So one of the main ones that I've seen is actually when we're basically bring back the same behaviors. So the whole idea around OKR is to make sure that we've, we're empowering teams to set their own targets, to understand the outcomes and to have those aligned to the business outcomes. However, OKRs will often get used as, as a way for micromanaging teams. For example, to just to accelerate this feature and basically you know, get to this point where OKRs are dates for things that should actually be tracked on release plans and roadmaps. So we're moving away away from uh, how we should be doing agile and planning and how we should be tracking those activities and snapping back into effectively waterfall ways of planning. And this is one of the challenges that we see is when they basically OKR uh, cascades become a whole bunch of projects and activities that tell teams what to do, we're completely missing the boat. And that's exactly what we should be using OKRs aligned to agile as a way to steer away from. Uh, another really interesting pitfall that I've noticed across the board is when the only key results that are being tracked are the business and the financial metrics. So metrics you know, basically on cost. And of course, if we're only ever tracking costs, we again, we, we fall back into that cost center trap uh, rather than tracking actually innovation and tracking how investments are driving business 
outcomes and outcomes for customers. So we somehow need to complement, as you'll see in this talk, those financial metrics. Another even more interesting one that I've been seeing as a, as a common pitfall is to take team level telemetry and metrics, uh, such as uh, uptime or such as uh, deploys per day or such as user story point velocity or those sorts of things, and to say that those should be organizational key results. And of course, when you do that, when you take a team's telemetry, uh, which is very important telemetry for that team, and we should be measuring each of those things I just mentioned, in addition to, to all the other team level metrics, the agile metrics, the service uh, and uptime and stability metrics and the DevOps metrics. Uh, but if you're setting that as a goal for the entire organization around one of those metrics, you fall into this local optimization of the value stream trap, which we've all seen, which is that we're basically looking at uh, uh, measuring a value stream with a two inch loop. This is a, John Willis said this beautifully, but measuring a, a 12 inch value stream with a, with a two inch ruler. We, we need both sets of metrics and we need to understand what the interplay between them is. Uh, and then another very interesting one that I've been seeing even more is when OKRs are introduced in feedback cycles that are much too slow. So by design, of course, OKRs are, you know, they came from Silicon Valley, they're around product oriented innovation rather than project management as the way that we operate uh, digital and innovation. Uh, and when we've got cycles that are now taking 120 days, let's say to deliver value and provide feedback, you can't even adopt OKRs. This is something that with a the OKR guru, Felipe Castro, uh, we, we realized in a webinar and, and the Project of Product podcast that we did recently is that when we're measuring organizations who can't basically deliver features to customers within 90 days, and when you're deploying OKRs there, your feedback cycle is just far too slow. So you can be in a situation where flow 